It is grafting time. All right, let's go over some tools that you need. First off, you need this grafting knife or a sharp blade. You'll need some pruning shears to cut the rootstock or the existing tree, some scion wood, also known as the cuttings from the new growth of the desired tree variety, rubber bands to secure the graft, paraffin tape or grafting tape to secure and waterproof the graft. Different grafts require different techniques. This first example is a Sherwood Jujube Scion grafted to a Shangzi Li Jujube tree using a splice graft. First, you want to find the diameter of the rootstock that matches the diameter of the Scion wood. The Scion wood should have one or two leaf buds on it. You don't want to graft on a node, so pick an area that is straight like this one. After you have found the perfect placement and diameter, cut the rootstock with your pruning shears. Then with the grafting knife, make a single angled cut that matches in length on the scion wood and the rootstock like this. Make sure they match in width and length. The main goal is to match the cambium layer on both the scion and the rootstock, which is the really green stuff here. And you don't want to handle them for too long because they dry out in direct sun. Place them facing each other and wrap a rubber band tightly around the graft so it compresses the wood together and provides support. Wrap the rubber band with grafting tape from the rootstock to the tip of the scion wood so moisture doesn't leave or get into the graft. Here is a whip and tongue graft. You do the same as a splice graft and add an additional cut from one third the distance from the top and ending at one third the distance to the bottom of the graft cut. You place them together and have the scion wood overlapping the rootstock like this. This one is my favorite grafts because it's stable and it really doesn't dislodge easily. And you want to wrap it with a rubber band. Then with grafting tape, kind of like this. Now I have two grafts on this jujube tree. As you can see here, fully wrapped, which is so beautiful. Here are two more grafts I did on my sugarcane jujube using Redland scion wood. One has a splice and the other one has a whip and tongue graft, but you can see how tightly I wrap those rubber bands and also the grafting tape. Here's the video on how well the grafts did five months later. They already fruited the first year of the graft and produced stellar fruit with a good size and a good amount. That is what I like about jujubes. They produce on the first year growth, which is awesome. Now I'm shifting to persimmon grafts. I'm not sure what grafts would work with persimmon, so I tried all three versions. So here's a whip and tongue graft with the coffee cake persimmon. I wrapped it with a rubber band. See that? Nice and tight. Then I also wrapped it with grafting tape, as you can see here. All the way down from the rootstock, all the way up past the top of the scion wood. Here is a chocolate persimmon as a cleft graft, which consists of cutting the wood stock down the middle and creating a wedge with the scion wood. When you wrap all the grafts, start with the root stock and wrap it tightly up to the scion wood and slowly overlapping the rubber band so it will close the cut, kind of like this. And then use the grafting tape to wrap the entire thing. This will keep it so moisture doesn't get in there and destroy it. It also provides an opportunity for the new buds to break through the paraffin. Here's another cleft graft with a, another persimmon. This is a giant fuyu. I wrapped it again with the rubber band and the cleft graft. Another alternative is you can pack some waterproofing at the top of the rootstock there so that it is covered instead of covering it all with the grafting tape like I did here. But you're going to see here in a second what actually happened with these cleft grafts. Here's a Hychia persimmon. I did a whip and tongue graft. You can see that there's a space there and I flip it around and I push them together so that they have a good little overlap. Make sure that the cambium layer overlaps with the whip and tongue. Here I wrapped it with the rubber band, just like I did with the other ones, tied a knot at the top and also at the bottom to make sure that it is secure. And then I lastly wrapped it with the grafting tape. Here we're going back to see the other grafts that I put in together with the persimmons. You can see that I have them all wrapped and some of them are very close to the ground. The root stalks took well, but, um, and they had new growth. 
I just needed to have a different variety of tree because I didn't want the rootstock variety growing in my backyard. Usually doesn't taste as good, the rootstock variety. On this variety, I had the chocolate persimmon grafted at the top and off to the bottom left-hand side. As I come down here, it shows that angle, and that angle that came out the side is the rootstock variety. So here I am uh, about six or eight weeks later, and you can see that there's growth right there, but it's in the rubber band. So I don't know if that's above the graft or below the graft. It could be, I think, it's above the graft, but I won't know for sure until um, I start getting the rubber band removed and I can see where the graft cut was actually done. This one, which also is a cleft graft, nothing yet so far. There was a little bud right here that was growing and I picked it off because it's a part of the cleft graft and nothing on the scion wood was actually growing yet. So I wanted to put all of that energy in the scion wood, not in the rootstock. Here is a really exciting thing. This is the coffee cake persimmon, a little bit of growth down towards the bottom, but the main growth happened above the graft, which means it is a part of the scion wood. So this was a successful graft. It was not a cleft graft. Looks so beautiful. And here is the chocolate persimmon, the maru persimmon. And it was also a cleft graft, but you can see here, as I'm looking at it, there's no new growth and there's no green. And ultimately this one did die. I was unable to get anything from any of the cleft grafts that I did, but all of the whip and tongue grafts were successful. Here we come to the whip and tongue. This one was a uh, maru or chocolate persimmon. Also good growth. Here are some other trees that I grafted. This is a Howard Miracle that I grafted to a plum. And this is a splice graft, but I didn't use a rubber band. And amazingly enough, this Howard Miracle really shot out and started to grow. On the back side, I did the same thing, except used a rubber band. So I might have wrapped it a little bit too tight. No new growth coming off this back side with the same root stock and the same scion wood. But there's the growth for the Howard Miracle. Man, so nice. Can't wait to have this fruit. Now shifting over to the apple tree, I did five different varieties. Here's the pink pearl apple graft. Uh, the cleft graft worked for the apples. The whip and tongue also worked for the apples. I had a 100% success rate on all of my grafts with the apple tree. And this is just showing the success of it. Here is the smokehouse graft that I put on here. Really good growth on both of the grafts. You can see that one was a cleft graft, and this one is also a cleft graft with a smokehouse. This one's a golden dorset, or the dorset golden apple. It also was successful on both grafts. Look at that growth. Good golly, grafting is awesome. As long as you line up the cambium layer with your grafts, that's the number one thing that gets most people to not have successful grafts. That and also timing. You want to make sure that you're grafting when things are starting to grow. And here's a Fuji apple graft onto my, I don't know if this rootstock is Gala apple or Fuji apple. So I thought I would graft another Fuji and see what happened. See if it flowers out the same, uh, flowering out at the same time, or if the fruit flowers at the same time. Here we are later on in the season, just showing the growth. This is uh, about two months after the graft. Some really good growth. With all of the various grafts. The main reason why I'm doing five varieties on this tree is because, or four additional varieties, is because I want to, one, have different varieties, also see what type of apple varieties work best here in zone eight of St. George, Utah. It gets to about 115 degrees, so some of the apples become mealy, and they don't end up tasting that good. But some varieties have tasted really good, even though people have said Fuji does the best here. It, has not been the case for mine. 
they have been very, very small in terms of size with the apple. They're about the same size as the jujubes. But I get 10 times the amount of jujubes that I do apples, and they just taste better in this desert climate. I do water them a good amount, but I thought I would try a bunch of different apple varieties and see what would work on this tree. Here is the Asian pear. This is the Hasoi graft. I did three of these grafts. This one was successful. This one was also successful. It died back in the heat of the summer because it didn't get a good jump on growth. But then it started coming back in the fall. And here's another graft. All of them survived the winter. Cleft graft, splice, and whip and tongue. This variety is a Shinsiki Asian pear. It is a double cleft graft, which is was fun to try. Uh, the great part is both of these lived and they started to grow, but then when fall came, it was not so nice because you will see here in a second what actually happened. Here we are zooming in, coming underneath. This was uh, about three months after the graft. It was growing and by fall, um, one of the grafts ended up dying, the one to the left. So I only have one that's coming off of that bark graft. Here's the Hosoi and the other ones. All right, if I were to summarize, what is the best graft? Number one would be whip and tongue graft. I love it, it's secure, it's easy to do. It takes a little bit more time, but a huge success rate. The second would be the splice graft. I like the simplicity of it, just as long as you line up the diameter of the grafts, it works out great. My least favorite is the cleft graft. I had success with pears and apples in the cleft graft, but not persimmons and um, not jujube. But overall, all three of the grafts can work as long as you just keep them protected and wrapped securely. They should be able to make it. I hope this video was very informative. I hope you have an excellent day.